In this short video, we're going to talk about the average value of a function. Now, we know from elementary school that if we have a set of numbers, we can find its average or its mean by just adding up the numbers and then dividing by the number of numbers. So for example, if we record the temperature at a specific time in Pasadena, uh, in degrees Celsius, we do it for one week, we would get seven numbers, 12, 10, 14, 8, 7, 10, and 9. And if we wanted to know what the average temperature was at that time, so 6 a.m. during the week, I would just add all of those numbers up, take that sum, which turns out to be 70, divide that by 7, and I'll find that the average temperature at that specific time was 10 degrees Celsius. Well, what if I have a continuous function? Really, if you think about it, temperature is changing continuously throughout the day. So if I look at the temperature as a graph for a six day period, I can see that it's constantly changing. And so if I wanted to know what was the average temperature throughout the entire six day period, how could I go about that? It's temperature is constantly changing. And there's, it's continuous that I would have to choose from. Well, it's actually related to the mean value theorem for integrals. Now this is, similar to the mean value theorem for derivatives, you still have to have a continuous function on a closed interval. But now we're saying that there's going to be a number c in that open interval a comma b, where function from a to b is going to be the same as taking that one number f of c times the length of the interval, b minus a. So geometrically, this is saying that this rectangle whose height is and whose base is b minus a has the same area as the area under the curve. In fact, in the situation where the function curve lies completely above the x-axis. If I were able to chop up this red area, which is above the line, y equals f of c, that area should fit in the blanks underneath the line. So how does that help us find the average value of a continuous function? Well, we get this number c, where f of c equals 1 over b minus a, time from a to b of f of x dx. That is what we're going to value of the function. And it makes sense based on that geometric interpretation. So let's look at an example. The acceleration of gravity on Mars is about 3.7 meters per second per second. We throw an object straight up from a height of 1.85 meters with a velocity of 14.8 meters per second. We'd like to find the equation of the velocity of the object and its average velocity for the time period between t equals 1 and 3. And I have a mistake here that I'm going to correct right now because we don't want to find the velocity. We have to find the velocity. Really what we want to find is the height. And we'd like to find its average height. All right, so we're given 
the acceleration. Remember, acceleration is going to go towards the center of the planet. And so that's why we're going to have to put a negative sign on it. So we are given an acceleration, a constant acceleration of negative 3.7. So to find the velocity, we'll need the antiderivative of acceleration. So let's go ahead and calculate that. And we'll have to find our initial constant of integration, so c1. But we're given the initial velocity is 14.8. So uh, just by substitution, we'll find that the, uh, the initial constant of integration is going to be 14.8. And now we have the complete formula for the velocity, which is then negative 3.7t plus 14.8. Now the height is just a position function going in a vertical direction. So the height will be the antiderivative of the velocity. So let's go ahead and calculate that antiderivative just using the power rule. And we'll get a second constant of integration, which we can determine because we're told that the initial height is 1.85 meters. And so from that, we get that our second constant of integration is 1.85. So now we have the full equation for the height. And now we'd like to find the average height, which is the average value of the height function between t equals 1 and t equals 3. So we'll have to take 1 over 3 minus 1. So that's my endpoints, a and b. And then the integral from 1 to 3 of the height function. So to help evaluate, I set up this problem so that there's a constant factor of 1.85 in all of these terms. So I'll go ahead and factor that out. Of course, 3 minus 1 will be 2, so I'll have a 2 in the denominator. And then we're just left with the evaluation. The antiderivative is simple to calculate. It's even simpler since we factored out. And then if I evaluate that correctly, we'll find that the average height is about 24.43 meters. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video on the average value of a function, and I hope you found it useful.